Radio said. America was founded by a group of Christians. I'm going to try it again. A group of Christians. I'm going to try it one more time. That is precisely what we intend to do is to impose Christian laws on everyone in the United States of America. That is what we have to do as Christians. We have to make sure that like the moon reflects the sun, the state reflects the church. We have to make sure that our normative laws and the laws that are passed by the government reflect the natural and the moral laws written by God. That is our job. It's to say the truth is this. America was founded as a Christian nation. And our success as a nation depends upon our fidelity to God's word. And I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk. It's not in the Constitution. It was in a stinking letter. And it means nothing like what they say it does. When the founders configured this new nation, they recognized that religious establishment was a form of tyranny. Uh, it tyrannized the people. And so they came up with this radical idea that the people themselves should determine how they wanted to worship rather than have that dictated by the state. The separation of the state from the church is a key Baptist confessional principle that predates the United States of America. Because people have to come to God one by one through new birth, someone cannot be claimed as a Christian because of citizenship in a state. So if the state or the culture bullies people out of openly expressing their religious views, you don't end up with Christians, you end up with pretend Christians. And um, as an evangelical Christian, I don't think that takes anyone to heaven. Well, we are living in a day and age where you thought that the Taliban only was over in Afghanistan. But unfortunately, the Taliban has taken on a form within the United States under the Christian dome or Christian fascism. <laughs> In previous videos, I've highlighted how MAGA Republicans have embraced core elements of fascism. The combination of fascism and Christian nationalism is called Christofascism, a term first used half a century ago by the theologian Dorothy Zola. Fascists rise to power by characterizing their opponents as subhuman. Christofascists take it a step further by casting opponents as not just subhuman, but actually demonic. We will call it. Because you have people out here, many that was on the thumbnail, and many pastors, many uh, Christians, many YouTubers, all of them, support a form of Taliban-style religion. Because they want to force Christianity down Americans' throats. They don't want to go about what it says here in Matthew 29, 19. And I do have the notes, Scott. And as let's let's read it off. Let's let's do some reading. Let, let's hold off. Let's see. Matthew 29, it, it says, therefore, go and use the government and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, oh, wait a minute. Ba uh, use the government. Oh, nah, nah, that's wrong. I got a wrong interpretation. I am sorry. Hold on. Let me let me reread that. Matthew 29, 19. Let me read it again. Therefore, go and use Donald Trump and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, wait. I thought I had it right. I am totally wrong again. Oh, okay. Well, let's read this. I mean, I don't know where these other interpretations come from, but they're, they're floating around. But it really says this. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see, these people that we continue to talk about, pastoral leaders, Christian leaders in the community, small YouTubers, 
YouTubers that want to be famous, that pastor wise, prop false prophet wise, you name it. They all want to take and try to take Christianity and shove it down people's throats. They and if you claim to really be a Christian, if you claim to really be a Christian, God has given us the instruction on how to go about discipling people. And it doesn't say that Jesus, when he went and sat with the tax collectors and had a seat and said, you know what? I, I want you guys, you know, we need to go meet, go to the government and, and go see, you know, go to set, uh, go talk to the kings or, 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 you know, whoever's in charge and see if we can get your life personally turned around. What did he do with the woman at the well? Did he, did he say, you know, um, you know, we need to go gather your things, gather your things because, you know, we need to go see if they've got some laws put in place to get you in order because that's how we're going to go about it. You get the point. That's where these people are. For some reason, they think that they want to control you with this fascism style religion and they're nothing but a version of the Taliban in in the United States form. And they're trying to take it and it is branched off to other parts of the world. This kind of style, this mindset is floating around everywhere. This, and we're in dangerous times. You know, because I was thinking of, you know, Psalms 24, 1 and Genesis, because I was thinking about this. You know, the scripture, you know, where it says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And I, and I have on down here, Abraham referred to the Lord as the possessor of heaven and earth. In Psalms 21, uh, 24, 1, David affirms in Psalms 24, 1, David affirms that the truth that the Lord is uh, uh, owns all creation. So we know that the earth as the earth is the Lord's and the fullness there. He owns everything in this world, including us. And, and I have down in here that David uh, acknowledges that God owns all of human beings. The term translated fullness here is meant as a reference to all people. And then in 1 John 2, 2, because of um, Jesus Christ died for our sins, all of, for all of mankind, I have here, therefore the Lord has a rightful claim to our lives by virtue of creation and redemption. So in other words, what I'm trying to say, who are you when you don't own nothing in this world? You came in here with nothing? And you're going to leave out of here with nothing. And who are you to be this self-righteous, Pharisee-minded Christian that you call yourself to try to tell people that, you know what, because you do not have Jesus Christ in your life, because you are not living the way that I think that you should live, I'm going to do it in any form necessary. If that means taking a politician that's totally corrupt, and have broken the law and elevate him and continue to keep him in power and utilize judges and whatever to get what I want. That's how it's going to happen. Who do you think you are? You don't own nothing. So you have no say in somebody's spirituality. Because guess what? As I mentioned in the other video where I said, you know, I thought this comment that was a great comment because I want to read it to you that, that somebody, it was a comment that they left on a particular channel where it's American Christian nationalism versus disciples of Jesus. And here we are. I'm going to read this. And, you know, because we need to get this clear. Because for some reason or another, you continue to hear these people, oh, policies or this or that things and all of that. Jesus said, go make disciples. How are you going to be make a disciple? He did not say go get the government or some politician or some whoever to go make them, put them in place so that they can somehow make this person convert and conform to what you want them to conform. So let's let's let me read this off. American Christian nationalism to make America great again to make a Christian values law to take away freedoms. A free will. This is what somebody had wrote. So that do you get that? God has given us free will. That's the key word. Just stay with that word. That's the key word. To make America a holy nation, 
This is American Christian nationalism we're talking about. To make a that this person wrote, to make America a holy nation, a kingdom on earth, to present God a pure offer, offer up America on a silver platter, they says. To press the, the agenda of Christian values, even if we lose our integrity as believers. You see what's happened. Many folks, man, they, they, they didn't set up and compromise everything. You know, they, they when they know that they should have stood up long ago for many things and they're silent. Just like I said, the hatefulness and the rhetoric and the things that are being pushed out here, especially towards migrant people, especially towards the people, you know, in Springfield. We talked about many of these so-called Christian YouTubers and whatever that claim that they have this heart or whatever or act like they have a heart. Apparently, they don't have anything because you haven't heard anything from them because they're concerned just like the Pharisees and everything else of taking laws and hoping to force people into Christians or changing their lives through laws in society. And they go on here to say that, that by works that we can make by works, that's the key, by, not by faith, but by works, th that we can make a, a Christian nation. That's what these people are doing. They by works, by the law by trying to chastise people, by trying to force people. And, and I mean, it's, it's gotten crazy. And then they has to use, and I have on here to use whoever, whatever we can to achieve the goal. I think I added that on there. Now, disciples of Jesus, that versus disciples of Jesus, love God, love your neighbor as you love yourself. The kingdom of God is not on this earth. Preach the gospel of Jesus and his kingdom. Grace of salvation, not by works, free will, all must choose. There's that word again, free will, all must choose. Trust in God, not in man, endure till Jesus returns. We will be, it will, it will be like in the days of Noah, as scripture tells us, but we to continue to endure just because you didn't got restless, just because you don't like what you see out here. Just because you don't like how somebody's acting and their lifestyle and all of that, we are continuing to stand firm in the word of God. We're not to compromise it. We're not to twist it. We're not to take it and make it about us. Because you know what? As, the, as we talked about in the beginning of this message, we don't own nothing on this earth. And you don't own that other human being. And you don't have the right to try to sit there and make them convert to Christianity if they don't want to, because God has given us a f our f own free will. They're going to have to answer to God someday if they reject him. But it's up to you to be a disciple and be the one and be that example so that they can go, you know, maybe see some light and some, you know, evidence of fruit in your life in the church and all of that and want to decide to convert and change and maybe turn their life around and repent. But they don't see that. All they see is self-righteous, hateful people out here that has gotten worse over the years. These folks have gotten more worse than I, it's worse. From the whole time I've been a Christian going on 30 years now, this is the worst that I've seen in my lifetime of the self-righteousness and the hatefulness coming from people that profess to be Christians, including pastors, leaders, and you name it. It's ridiculous. And I have on here, as we close this message out, I have on here, you know, many of these people that are in leadership positions, even the one that's running for office, that's utilizing and playing Christians as a, a, as a, as a fiddle, as we always talk about, Mr. Trump and all of that, doesn't want it, don't want, you know, don't want any guardrails want to do whatever they want to do. And, and, and I mean, this, that's, that's this fascism style religion. And it's the same thing, unfortunately, within I have on here of many ministers, pastors, YouTube, that people that call themselves Christians, they don't want any guardrails. It show they basically are a reflection of the, of every, of the person that's leading the pack. This is why they want to do whatever they want to do. They want to teach craziness on their on their channels. They want to teach heresy. They want to talk crazy. They want to threaten people. They want to hide your comments and and delete you off of their channels when you call them out for lying on the Lord. They want to do all of that. 
You know, I've gotten so many messages as I close here, as I say again, from this Brandon Biggs, people that come in and, oh, they stand up for this guy. And they claim that he's this man of the God and all of this. And it just shows you how deceived people are. You know, one of the more craziest things I heard this guy say where he's talking about, I don't know, a month and a half ago, and talking about every Christian has a demon that follows them around daily. And he talks about, well, you got to speak in tongues in order to confuse that demon. And this like that. And everybody should be able to speak in tongues. That is total nonsense. And these people, some of the stories that guy talks about and tells, the guy's not well. I mean, it's common sense. If you got any kind of sense, some type of dis any discernment, any of it, the guy's not well. Nobody talk. I mean, some of the things this guy talks about, th this is, it shows you how deceived people are. And we are in danger. And this is why the church is in so much danger right now. Because the Pharisees are out like never before, man. They're everywhere in, I mean, from the highest level down. And people are, are sitting there and letting folks niceness fool them. They thinking because they're smiling and bringing their wives on. And they're sitting there and you're, they're calling these people man of God, prophet of God, all of this stuff. These folks are frauds and these folks are deceiving you. And these folks are pushing people away from the Lord. And don't you be the one to be responsible for being that stumbling block and tripping somebody up and keeping them from finding the Lord when the Lord possibly could be using you to lead them and make a difference in, uh, in their life. Some of you are guilty of that and you're going to be held responsible. And I would not want to be standing before the Lord when he brings up the times that he saw your actions. He saw your heart. He and the things, the way you conducted yourself towards people and the rhetoric and all of the certain things you did. That is a dangerous place to be. And I would not want to be in your shoes. So if that's you, you better repent. And we're going to continue to take this devil as we talk about head on because he is on a terror right now. And souls are being destroyed. Sound the alarm. We have to before it's too late for many people. Because tomorrow's not promised for none of us. And many of you can die in a separation from the Lord if you don't repent. So we'll continue to talk about the issues the church run away from. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, take the devil head on, punch it right in between the chops. Evangelism for God's channel. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.